You're listening to Reimagined Radio. Real talk, real life, real magic. Welcome to Love, Life, and Law of Attraction, the show that is all about helping you find the love you want in your life and loving the life you have right now. World-class experts, thought-provoking topics, and conversations and tools that are going to help you live the life you really want starting today. So pour yourself a cup of tea, have a seat, and get ready to join Love, Life, and Law of Attraction. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Love, Life, and Law of Attraction. This is Lisa, and I want to talk today really briefly about a topic I think we are all interested in, which is being likable. Kind of a hot button topic right now, because I think there's a lot of attention right now on maybe the pitfalls of trying to be liked or the pressure to be more likable, particularly women, or women, excuse me. In fact, I've done some work, blog posts, and on podcasts on the freedom of not being liked and how just establishing the fact in your own head that you might not be liked can set you free. But on the flip side of that coin, being likable, being able to be likable, that skill set that's involved in likability can make life a lot easier particularly if you don't feel the pressure to be liked, but you want to be liked for reasons that are more healthy and reasons that make more sense in your life. I recently talked to a woman who was bombing a ton of first dates. And this woman was, well, not was, is gorgeous. I mean, her online dating profiles get a ton of attention because she's really, really pretty. And she gets a lot of first dates and almost never gets second dates. I mean, she's been single and dating for more than three years and has never gone on a third date. So when we first connected, she thought it was all about the men. She had a lot of stories about how unavailable and unreliable men are. And not too surprisingly, she was attracting a lot of unavailable really unreliable men. In fact, the men in her life that had always been there, like her brothers and friends, started behaving really dodgy because she was really focused on, like, sketchy men. Now, I know this woman, and I know she's been on some first dates with some really incredible men who made amazing partners for other lucky women. The truth is, the men aren't her problem. The common denominator on all of those first dates was her. And here's the truth about her. She's a really nice person, but she isn't very likable, especially at the first impression. She's got a heart of gold, but she comes off as cold and demanding. I mean, it might be a defense mechanism because she works in a very male-dominated profession. It's all business. And her somewhat harsh demeanor might be necessary in that environment, but it was eclipsing her beauty on the inside and actually her beauty on the outside. This woman wasn't getting second or third dates. I mean, she just didn't come off as likable. There's a difference between likability and being nice. We've all met people that that were like that, right? Very charismatic, maybe. Very likable at first glance. But under those layers of likability, maybe we realized we didn't like them very much. And we may have met people that weren't very likable at first glance, but when you got to know them, were really actually awesome. Problem is, if someone's not likable, oftentimes people don't take the time to get to know them very well. They don't take the time to peel off those, those layers, peel back what's going on on the outside to get to the really nice person that is living inside underneath an unlikable exterior kind of crusty part of their personality. I mean, dating is a really easy place to gauge likability because we can keep track of the score. And the score is second and third dates. Are you able to, 
you know, create relationships? Are you able to engage with people in a way that you're attractive? But there's lots of ways where likability affects us. It affects us in our our work, our business world. It affects us with our, you know, family and friends. It affects us just in getting around in our daily lives and how we interact with people that we that we interact with, the grocery teller, the bank person, all of it. Likeability matters and it can make life a lot easier. And for some people, likability is a set of skills that you probably need to learn and practice. Actually, for all of us, likability is a set of skills that we need to learn and practice because really that's what it is. I mean, yes, there is some chemistry to likability, but the reality of it is, is if we don't master these skills, we will never get to the part where chemistry plays a role in developing relationships. So I'm going to give you five quick tips to being more likable, these sort of skill-based tips to likability. And they do take practice for some people more than others. I mean, I'm an introvert. So getting out there and doing some of these things can feel really uncomfortable to me. But with practice, these things become second nature, and they make you instantly more likable. First one is not going to surprise you. Smile and make eye contact. People subconsciously gauge approachability by eye contact. Scientific studies have proven that we find people who smile are both more attractive and more interesting. Unless you're a super extroverted open book, chances are pretty high you probably benefit from smiling and making more eye contact than is naturally comfortable. But once you get into the swing of it, it becomes more natural and it gets easier because connection happens more naturally. Even for introverts who are actually really drawn to connection, smiling and making eye contact can make that connection happen quicker and make those interactions, those initial interactions, more comfortable. And I think, like I said, the important thing here to remember is smiling doesn't make you more attractive. It literally makes people think that you are more interesting. It makes everything you say and everything you try to communicate a little more shiny and a little more intriguing to the person that you're interacting with. Number two is listen to the person that you're talking to and listen to them talking to you and listen like you actually give a crap. Gotten to the point where we are so accustomed to digital communication, which is very brief, it's very curt, it's very to the point. We are very distracted by digital communication. I can't tell you how often I hear stories of people going on dates, maybe even first dates, where their date is looking at their phone or posting on social media or responding to text messages. Like listening to somebody like you actually care what they're saying makes it easier to really care about what they're saying. Learn people's names and use them. People like the sound of their own names. Ask questions that indicate you're paying attention. Make the person you're talking to feel like the only person in the room. That in and of itself might be the strongest characteristic of care of charisma. And when you listen to people talk about having met extremely charismatic people, Bill Clinton actually comes to mind. If you talk to anybody who's ever met Bill Clinton, they will tell you one thing. There were a hundred people in the room and I felt like I was the only person that he was interested in. Making that person that you're talking to feel seen and heard and like cutting out, like walling off all of the other distractions around you so that you can make them feel like they're the most important person in the room. Listen, like you actually give a crap. That will make you extraordinarily likable. Number three Be willing to share something about yourself. Now, we all know it's not really sexy to make conversation all about you, but it's also not sexy to be a closed book. A certain amount of vulnerability is required for connection. You want to give people something to remember you for. If you focus on them exclusively in the conversation, like that's all you talk about where you're asking questions and you're not really opening yourself to share at all, it starts to feel a little bit like an interview or even an inquisition to the other person. And you are not very memorable. 
your willingness to share about yourself in, you know, the right proportions, but to give them something, to tell them something about you that they can take away, to tell them something about you that they might be able to relate with will make you very, very likable. And even if sharing doesn't necessarily engender like a lot of commonality, it still makes you feel more engaged and more uh, more approachable. Being willing to share something about yourself is like a core foundation stone to likability. Number four, what you like about the person you're interacting with when you interact with them. Focusing on what you like about a person changes the energy of the conversation, and that energy is palpable. We've all experienced that, right? When we're talking to somebody that we can tell really digs it, as opposed to when we're talking to somebody that we can tell kind of doesn't. Conversation can be the same, but the energy is really, really different. When you're thinking about what you like about the person that you're communicating with, that person will subconsciously feel more liked and everybody wants to be liked. They're drawn to people who like them. Additionally, stating the obvious here, you'll enjoy the interaction more if you're intentionally focused on what you like instead of defaulting to being critical or disinterested. Energy goes where attention flows. And if you are putting healthy, happy, positive likable energy into a conversation and thinking about the things that you really appreciate about the other person, you infuse those interactions with a lot more energy and it makes you instantly more likable. Now, the fifth one, this one, I'm just going to say, don't be an idiot. Use your good judgment. Please don't be creepy, but a little bit of touch goes a long way. Now, the amount of touch that's appropriate will obviously vary based on every situation. However, however, even at a first encounter, a little bit of physical contact increases likability. That's why a handshake or a hug is almost always socially appropriate, particularly a handshake. Maybe not always a hug, but these are things that we know we do in social interactions for a reason. A touch on the arm or the shoulder subconsciously creates connection. Studies have shown that people are 70% more likely to remember the names of people who hug them. These are the kinds of steps, right? This isn't about being born likable and charismatic. This is about learning a skill set that makes you more likable. And any of us can do things that make us more likable. Things like this that are actually incredibly simple. So if you want to increase your likability quotient, you might want to just consider incorporating more of these things in your day-to-day interactions. Smile and make eye contact. Listen to the other person like you actually give a crap. Be willing to share something openly about yourself. Think about what what you like about the other person when you're interacting with them. And reach out and touch some socially appropriate physical contact. So if you'd like any support on this or anything else, you can find me at lisamhayes.com. That's Lisa Marie, lisamhayes.com. I would love to connect with you. Big love to you. Everyone talks about self-care. No one ever really teaches you how to do it. Love is a verb. If you want to love yourself more, you have to treat yourself like someone who's worthy of love. Behavior first, feelings will follow. The Self-Care Clinic is a free digital course that will teach you to behave your way to self-care and self-love. You will learn a practical, measurable approach to self-care that will save your sanity and might just save your life. Go to www.theselfcareclinic.online. That's www.theselfcareclinic.online. Register for free today. Thank you for joining us on Love, Life, and Law of Attraction. 
We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you back here next week. For more information, you can find me at lisamhage.com.